What's up everyone? This is problem 2.6 out of Griffith's Electrodynamics. I'm going to go through and work out the solution and if you enjoy this, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel because I will be posting more videos like this in the future and it greatly helps me out. I really do appreciate it. So how are we going to tackle this problem? We have a flat circular disc of radius R and it has a surface charge density sigma and we want to find the electric field a distance z above this circle the circular disk so the way that we're going to go about this is we're going to and in this orange circle we're going to think of just the orange circle so there's you know a surface charge density uh, uh, sigma but just ignore that for the moment and think of just that one disk or that one ring, I guess, is a better way to call it. If we find the electric field that one ring contributes and we integrate from zero to R, that'll give us the total electric field that the whole circular disk gives. So we're going to find the contribution of each individual ring, integrate it from zero to R, and then we'll have the total electric field. Now, why are we doing this? Because the first part, finding the electric field of a single ring, is problem 2.5 out of a textbook. And some guy with too much time on his hands and no social life has already done that here. So you can check that out if you'd like. So the electric field, just for everyone who forgot, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times 2 pi r z divided by r squared plus z squared to the 3 halves and there's sigma in the z hat direction this was lambda in the previous video but now we're dealing with a disk so we're going to change it to sigma so this is for a single ring and then the total electric field i'm just going to factor out the constants 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times 2 pi sigma. Z is a constant here because we're not changing the point that we're looking at. We're integrating from 0 to R. R over R squared plus Z squared to the 3 halves dr. Okay, so you can plug that in a calculator. You could work it out by hand if you wanted to, but... For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to write this out. So the total electric field is this, these constants times 1 over z minus 1 over r squared plus c squared square root. And of course, this will also be in the z hat direction just by symmetry. And we argued that in the other video. So now we need to find the limiting cases. So the first one is the limit as big R goes to infinity of E total. Well, if we do that, this term is essentially going to make the whole fraction here go to zero, right? So in that case, we can just multiply through by 1 over z. And when we do that and we cancel some terms... There's a 2 there. Um, you'll get sigma. Pi cancels as well. Sigma divided by now 2 epsilon and the z hat direction. Now, for z much greater than r, which is the next bit here, let's just look at the term in question. This is what's interesting part here because we're going to compare these now i can factor out a one over z squared here so that would just leave me with one plus r squared over z squared all right and then factoring out the one over z squared from that i'll be left with this and i'm also going to move my exponent up to the top here and I can do that just by changing the sign of course 
And now what I can do is a binomial approximation for this. So I'm going to do that. We have our 1 over z, 1 minus 1 half r squared over z squared. And what we want is to know what this whole stuff is. So, oops, first off, that shouldn't be there. So, basically, we're going to rewrite all of this. So, in that case, we have our 1 over z. That was just there. That's this guy. Oops. This guy. Minus 1 over z. So I'm also distributing this. Okay. Plus the signs chains. R squared over z cubed. Which is just r squared over 2z cubed, of course. So that is the whole term I highlighted. So in that case, we can now rewrite oops, our total electric field as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times 2 pi r squared sigma over 2z squared. Because remember, there's still this term here that will cancel one of the z's. But your total charge q is going to be the charge per area times the area, right? Because sigma is the charge per area. So if we multiply both that by area, you're left with just charge. Okay, well, that's what this is, right? Pi r squared sigma. Um, so that's good. We can do that. So when we do this, we'll be left with our 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. We can see, obviously, the 2's cancel here. And we'll be left with q over z squared. Which makes sense, right? That's kind of what we would expect if our um, z was so high up. If you think about it, we're looking down at the circle, right? We're actually up, like you're coming out of the, I guess your, your, your computer screen. If you're really high up, this circle is gonna look just like a point charge. So it makes sense then, in this situation that we just described, that's exactly what our electric field looks like. So pretty cool. I hope that video helped. If it did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and I will continue to post more. Thank you.